the island. Legend has it that there is a small, mysterious island in the South Pacific that is home to possible humanoid beasts. Some claim the island was once a location for human-animal hybrid experimentation during World War II. Others say the island is a remnant of prehistoric times that is inhabited by creatures believed to be extinct for millions of years. Some believe it to be a relic of the lost city of Atlantis. Satellite imagery does not show evidence of the island's existence. Some say that is due to the island being other-dimensional and not visible to the naked eye at all times. Others believe that the satellite imagery shows signs of the satellite images having been manipulated with the enigmatic island having been scrubbed from the photos. While nobody has hard evidence that the island exists, there are some people who claim to have been on the island. These are their stories. Plane Crash I was alone flying a private plane en route to Japan when I experienced catastrophic engine trouble. I thought I was a goner. If I didn't die in the crash, I would drown in the ocean as I was in the middle of nowhere. I was able to control the plane well enough to keep the impact minimal. The plane was destroyed and sunk immediately. I was alive, but with no flotation device, it would have been only a matter of time before I succumbed to fatigue and drowned. Then I saw the island. It was in the distance, like a guardian angel beckoning to me. I don't know how long it took me to swim there. It felt like forever, but I made it. There was a small island that I had never noticed before, even though I had flown over the region countless times. The island was beautiful, white sandy beaches backed up to a lush jungle. I was very fortunate to find a freshwater stream not too deep into the jungle. Finding a water source is the most important aspect of surviving on a deserted island. I'm very good with my hands, and the jungle proved to be extremely resourceful. I immediately went to work on building a raft. I was able to start a large fire and spent my nights on the beach away from the jungle. The jungle was abundant with life. Birds, insects, and other wildlife could constantly be heard. If there were any predators on the island, they'd probably come out at night and roam the jungle. Sometimes late at night, when I was lying on the beach staring at the stars, I would hear a distant, bellowing roar. I didn't know what type of creature was making such a chilling sound, and I didn't want to know. What I did know was the longer I stayed on the island, the more likely I'd encounter whatever it was, so I doubled my efforts. On the third day, I had constructed a suitable raft and paddle, and it was this day that I had the most terrifying of encounters on the island. I was tying the last of the logs to my raft with a thick vine when I heard deep, guttural growls from just inside the jungle barrier. It couldn't have been more than 100 feet away from me. Whatever it was, I could hear it moving. Twigs were snapping and I could hear large swaths of jungle being pushed aside with relative ease. Whatever this thing was, it was large, heavy, and I didn't want any part of it. I pushed my raft into the ocean and the tide took me out to sea. It was just before dusk when a cargo ship spotted me. Out of Nowhere I wasn't looking for the island, but I found it. It appeared out of nowhere. It was a foggy day. I was sailing my boat much further out than I normally do, and all at once the fog lifted and the mysterious island was right there in front of me. It was like a dream. The gorgeous tropical island looked like a postcard with clear blue water surrounding the sun-bleached sand. 
and the density of the surrounding jungle was breathtaking. I had to stop and investigate. The first thing that was evident to me was that there was no sign of human life. I found that surprising because the beauty of this island was off the charts. Why some billionaire never snatched this up for their own private isle was beyond me. As I walked up the white sandy beach, I noticed some tracks in the sand near the jungle. The sand was too fine and dry for the track to hold form, but I could tell two things. It wasn't human, and it was big. Having seen that, I probably shouldn't have pressed my luck, but I carelessly decided to venture into the jungle. It was probably fortunate for me that I didn't get very far into the jungle before I spotted another track in a muddy spot. I bent down and inspected it. The, the print was gigantic. My first thought was it was a bear, but a bear in the jungle didn't sound right to me. My second thought was that this was the track of a large cat. All of a sudden the jungle sounded like it was being ripped apart as something not far away was tearing through the brush toward me. As I turned to run, I tripped and fell, just like people do in horror movies that I make fun of for being unrealistic. I kept thinking of how ironic it was going to be that I was actually going to die because I tripped and fell, allowing just enough time for the monster in the woods to catch me. As I fought to regain my footing, the sound behind me transformed into a coarse, scraping sound. My impression was that something big was rubbing against a tree. I could hear the leaves in the trees above me begin to shake with vigor. I looked up and realized that whatever this creature was, it just climbed up a nearby tree and was shaking various limbs, perhaps as a warning for me to vacate the premises. Well, the warning wasn't necessary. I raised myself up and bolted out of the jungle, down the beach, and to my boat. As I sailed away into the safety of the ocean, I couldn't help but think about the print that I found in the mud that I thought was that of a large cat. But although big cats can climb trees, they don't grab tree limbs and shake them. Wild Animals I was doing a little pleasure cruising on my boat when I received a distress call on my radio. Turns out a fellow boater had run out of gas and was stranded on the ocean. Lucky for them, I had spare fuel on my boat. I got their coordinates and was able to find them and gas them up enough for them to get back to the mainland. My rescue mission had taken me to a location I had never been to before. I boated around the area and found the island. I had never heard that there was some enigmatic island in the region. I was curious by my discovery and happened to feel a little adventurous, so I decided to take a look around. I ventured off the beach and followed a small animal trail until I found myself deep within the mighty jungle. It was a dense jungle and I likely would have turned back, but I thought I heard the distant churning of a waterfall. I was determined to follow the sound and witness what I could only imagine would be a breathtaking sight. The problem was, a fence was blocking my way. That's right, a fence. A thick gauge chain link fence that had to be at least 15 feet tall and was topped with barbed wire. I was quite intrigued as to how such a fence found itself so deep within the jungle on what appeared to be a deserted island. So I followed the fence. I must have followed it for two miles. I didn't find the end of it, but I did find a section of fencing that was turned up at the bottom. I was able to crawl under it with plenty of room to spare. As I trekked on, in the distance I could see a concrete structure. A building. A large concrete building in the middle of the jungle. I couldn't believe it. I was too far away to make out much in the way of detail, but was resolved to get closer and inspect it. That's when I noticed the thick, deep claw marks penetrating a nearby tree. And I could smell urine. I mean, there was no mistaking it was urine, but I kid you not when I say that it had a buttered popcorn scent to it. And then I heard a spine-tingling growl just up ahead of me. In hindsight, uh, it probably wasn't the wisest decision to turn and flee, but that's exactly what I did. I ran. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a fast runner, but I felt like I may have broken a world record by how rapid I was zooming through the forest. 
Unfortunately, whatever that thing was that growled at me was giving chase. I could hear it bursting through the brush behind me, and it was gaining ground. I was so lucky that I was able to reach the fence before it caught me. I scurried under the opening and then raced along the fence in hopes of luring the beast away from the opening under that fence. It worked. In no time the creature was by my side and crashed into the fence in an attempt to attack me. I fell down, looked up at the fence, and found myself eye to eye with a tiger. A tiger. An honest-to-goodness tiger. If the fence weren't there, I would have been mauled to death, no doubt. Even though the fence kept me safe from the tiger, I found myself screaming as I raced through the remainder of the jungle to my boat. The Creature I was actively searching for the island. I had been for years, but to no avail. If the island really did exist, I had a rough idea as to the general vicinity based on the suspected manipulation in the satellite photos. But even with a basic idea of where it was, it seemed impossible to find. Yes, I did entertain the thought that the island didn't really exist, but... My stubbornness, coupled with enjoying the search, kept me at it, and my perseverance finally paid off. I let out a cheer when I saw it. How it took me so long to finally discover the island, I could never figure out, but I didn't care. The island was real, and I found it. My fear was that it would just be another deserted island with nothing unusual about it at all. Those fears were instantly wiped clean the moment I discovered the fence. It was so out of place in the middle of the jungle. And why was it there? It, it had to be surrounding something. I walked down the fence line for what felt like the entire length of the island and was pleasantly surprised when I happened upon a gate. There was a chain on the gate and a lock, but it hung loose, unfastened. I pushed the gate open and found myself on a thin path. The path led to a magnificent sight. A concrete monolith emerging from the depths of the jungle. The building was enormous and seemed to break off into individual sections. Some of those sections were overrun by the jungle, but other sections were clean. Clearly someone, or something, was maintaining it. I stepped to the building and entered through a door that was propped open by the growth of heavy vines. I found myself in an endless concrete corridor. The walls were thick with condensation. The musty scent of mold was almost overwhelming. I covered my mouth and carefully made my way down the corridor. It was black as night. Had I not brought a flashlight with me, I would not have been able to see where I was going. I passed by several steel doors. I tried to open some of them, but they were all locked, so I continued on. The corridor ended at two dust-covered metal swinging doors. I pushed my way through them and found myself in a massive room. Even being deeply embedded within the building, the jungle still managed to find breaks and cracks in the foundation and had overtaken the room. But it couldn't hide what this place once was. A vast laboratory. There were various workstations, desks, shelving units, cabinets, and equipment. And cages. Rows and rows of cages. Some small, some immense. Animals were kept here at one time. Lots of animals. I could confidently conclude that they had been experimented on. A metallic crash at the far end of the room literally made me jump. I shone my flashlight in the direction of the bang. A metal door at the back of the room was kicked open and it fell to the ground. The echo of the crash was still ringing in my ears when I saw the monster standing in the doorway. At first I thought it was a man, until it bared its fangs and let out a hideous howl. Its piercing green eyes were fixed on me. Its face was striped orange and black and was surrounded by a circle of matted white hair. 
It slashed its ferocious claws through the air and hissed at me. This was some kind of human-tiger hybrid monster. I turned and ran out of the room and through the corridor back to the jungle. I was thankful that I made it back to my boat alive. I never returned to the island, or told anyone about my experience, until now. Inhabitants My name is Kurt Parrish. I live on the island. I was an American biologist and geneticist working for the United States Army when I was captured by the Japanese during World War II. I was a prisoner, but I was treated well. You see, they needed me. I was one of the leading experts in my field and they needed my assistance with their experiments. We were implanting human cells into various animal embryos. The ultimate goal was to create animals that could carry human organs that would be used for transplants. We had been making great strides faster than any of us had imagined, but the end of the war brought an immediate end to the life of the project. The Japanese vacated the facility in a panic, fearing the worst if the island were discovered by the Americans. There was serious concern on my part that I would be eliminated so as not to share any of the research we had been doing. Amidst the chaos of the evacuation, I was able to hide in one of the underground bunkers. In less than a day, every person in the facility had evacuated, and I was the only human on the island. I spent the first two days scheming as to how I could alert the Americans to my presence and get rescued from the island, when I realized that I did not want to be rescued. I did not want to leave. This was my own private paradise and I didn't want to be anywhere else. I immediately released all of the animals in the lab. Rats, rabbits, pigs, and apes thrive on the island to this day. The apes are fantastic security. On the rare occasions that someone finds the island and decides to investigate, the apes will often climb trees and shake branches. It scares the hell out of everyone. There were several tiger cubs that were caged in the lab that I released and raised. Their lineage continues and they are self-sufficient. They won't hesitate to kill anyone who breaches the security of the fence. They must have been on the other side of the island the day that someone actually made it all the way to the building and began snooping around. When I saw that the intruder was heading for the abandoned laboratory, I took matters into my own hands. I had pre-made a tiger mask and rubber claws just in case such a scenario occurred. When I kicked the metal doors open and presented myself to the trespasser, I actually witnessed the blood drain from his face as he turned ghostly white and then fled. I was successful in scaring him away, but do realize that his account of what happened could bring unwanted attention to the island. Hopefully not. Even if it does, the island is difficult to find. The fact is that it's a small island far away from any heavy boat traffic, and it won't be found on any maps. Even though the experiments took place ages ago, the Japanese do not want to acknowledge the existence of the island and have to answer any questions as to what they used it for. So I'm sure they have been going to great lengths to make it challenging for anyone to find. I'm an old man now. I don't know how old exactly, but take my word for it, I'm old, and I hope to live out the rest of my days on this island, in peace. <laughs>